Yes. But right now, we have got a Ramona from Mob Wives on the show. Good morning, Ramona. Good morning. How are you? I'm fantastic. Uh, so let's set this up for everybody, uh, just in case they don't watch the show, haven't watched uh, Mob Wives before. The show is is based on the lives of people involved in the mob, like the, the wives of mobsters, the, the daughters of mobsters. You are the granddaughter of Benjamin Lefty Guns. Uh, how do you say the last name? Rogerio from Ro- the movie Donnie Brasco. Rogerio, yeah. And so that's Al Pacino in Donnie Brasco. That was your grandpa. Yes, sir. So you uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, your childhood. I mean, what was it like? Were you seeing mob stuff? I mean, did you know this was happening? I mean, w- what's it like being a part of a family like that? I mean, I guess growing up, I really didn't, you know, realize what I was, you know, born into. But it was just basically a lot of people that I referred to as uncles, a lot of, um, you know, men basically, in, in a way, kind of just like praising my grandfather. And just like, just a, I guess, compared to the guy next door, if our father was a school teacher or a bus driver, just a little bit more, probably not a little bit more, a lot more of a lavish lifestyle. Mm-hmm. You know, we went to, went to trips where, for example, Bobby Vinton would come over and sing to you and serenade you. Um, everybody in the neighborhood would, even though you didn't know them, would be like, oh, my God, give this to your granddaughter for her birthday. Just a little bit, you know, a lot more praising. <laughs> yeah, so you knew, you knew something was special about it. But what, what did they ever say that they did? Like, what did you think Grandpa did for a living? Um, I thought my grandfather, for many years, which he kind of did have a job, was in the Fulton Fish Market. You know, my mm-hmm. grandfather, until the whole situation with Donnie Blasco, was never, ever arrested. So, you know, we spent my whole childhood, you know, I was with him. So I didn't know anything different. I thought he was just, you know, a guy that had, you know, owned a business. Yeah. Owned a club, stuff like that. You're a, uh, yeah, exactly, as a young woman. <laughs> and then you, uh, was your husband a uh, mobster as well? Your ex? No, my ex, though, and four, I mean, well, not really too much, unfortunately, because I had four beautiful children with him. He was affiliated with the mob. We had a business, and that's how I met him that, you know, basically was in bed with the mob. Oh, all right. I see. So so he yeah. not directly, not like a mobster himself, but, but ties to the mob. What happened to him? Did he ever have to go to prison or anything? No, basically, he, he's um, a low life. He took off and doesn't give his children any financial support, and he's in another country. Wow. Yeah, so I'm a, a mom of four, basically raising them mentally and financially all by myself. Do you? I, I love this show personally, Ramona. I like Thank watching you. Mob Wives. It's Sundays. Uh, it airs at six o'clock here in Billings on VH1. Uh, check it out, and they replay it often throughout the week. It's just a fun show. Such fun characters. But I want to know, like, it seems like people like you that have kind of grown up as children of the mob, you know, like that were a part of it, for some reason, like can't get out of it. It's like now you're out of it. I mean, there's no mob affiliations to you really at this point, but it's like, or and a lot of these um, ladies, well, they, they, they marry <laughs> mobs. You have to watch the show, honey. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I mean. Everybody's like, you're dating mobsters, you're, you're, you're with mobsters. It's like, why can't people just break out of the lifestyle? Like, is it too good? Is it too, I mean, how, what's the situation there where it's like, once you're in the mob life, you can't get out of it. I think a lot of times what goes on is just the people that you surround yourself with. For example, when I had met my husband, you know, I totally, you know, turned against that whole lifestyle. And, um, but, but unfortunately, he was associated with these people. I went marrying somebody that was out of my nationality. And, you know, I thought I was like, okay, let's go with a different nationality. But then again, I got this job. It was through friends, mafia ties, I guess that's how you want to label it. And um, push, you know, push came to shove and we wound up getting married. But then again, it's around who you surround yourself with. Always, well, somebody knows somebody or this is a friend. It's just the community, you know. Sadly, but to say, just is the community still there. So yeah. somehow or another it happens. Somebody said, uh, just texted in our text line, uh, somebody said, love her accent. Uh, but somebody said, the show's <laughs> terrible. It's very terrible. It's just a bunch of snitches. Well, I mean, however they want to li- I personally am not a snitch, so I don't know what they're speaking about. Um, yes, there is an incident or two, you know, where somebody on the show, unfortunately, does take that route, but it does not reflect by any means everybody on the show. Everybody has their own morals, everybody has their own principles, and you basically shouldn't judge every character just by the title of the show. I see. So, and that's, and I mean, do you feel like, what do you feel like about the mob? personally like do you look at it as like a positive thing is it like i mean a negative thing are you kind of proud to be a part of it or i mean do you want to completely distance yourself or how do you look at it because it seems like some of the ladies on the show are upset by what the mob did to them and other people are like they seem like 
you know, it sucks that my husband or ex or whatever's yeah. got to go to jail, but still, I kind of like that lifestyle. Well, basically, it's you know, to me, it's, it's bittersweet and it's two sides of the coin. You know, I will never deny who I was. My, this is something that my grandfather, you know, was, was he's old. He was old school. He, this is was his, his beliefs. This is what he stood by. So I respect that. I will never deny my, you know, my ties to that. But basically, at, at the you know the end of you know the mob story or anybody that does any type of crime, there's a sadness, and fortunately. Like, a lot of times we are surrounded by men that, you know, could go and do the time and, you know, basically fess up to what they have done. But the women, the children, the family are the ones left with the heartache, you know, not having the holidays, not having the birthdays, the milestones. So, yeah. honestly, it really shouldn't be, you know, you know, glamorized. But America is obsessed with this word, you know, mob, back and so, since the Godfather days. That's true. I mean, what do you think yeah. uh, about your grandfather? Do you think Al Pacino in Donnie Brasco portrayed? him well was that a pretty accurate portrayal of, of grandpa no well that was the whole thing i had i had gone to the set and i had met mr pacino and him and i had a conversation he was very charming very respectful and he told me once the book was written the movie had the, you know the the movie company had the right to change you know the book and my grandfather was basically at that point molded into all the characters that were around him so was my grandfather portrayed in any way that was was him no oh. um me and Mr. Al Pacino had a conversation. I said, if you could, when it comes to maybe a part about his family, could you please just play him, you know, that he loved us so much. He was a totally family man. Everything else, you know, was, a, was basically hogwash, right down to the fact that my grandfather was murdered. My grandfather died of cancer on Thanksgiving. Wow. So it was that big, I mean, th that epic. That was hard to say. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. That I mean, what and how? Do, how is it? How do you justify as a a, a, mob, a person involved with the mob there? Like, how do you connect with a person who you know has murdered people? Is that I mean, is it is that hard or is it just like well, I guess that's part of their job or like? Cause well, like, I personally don't know anybody that's murdered anyone because if they're a real man, they don't speak, so I wouldn't have that conversation. So I just judge people upon how they treat me. And what somebody is accused of, unless I see the proof in front of me, and with my grandfather, you know, he was convicted on the RICO Act. And, again, it was just something that, you know, it was always alleged, alleged, alleged. They never got him on tape admitting to anything. They never caught him doing anything. So for me to sit there and say, how am I with murderers, I personally wouldn't say no one, no one because nobody's admitted to anything. Ah, I see. So <laughs> so what you're saying is, like, as long as somebody doesn't, you know, if, if somebody admitted to you they're a murderer, you might handle that differently. But as long as it's not been proved to you, to you, you're just going to, you know, assume they're not a murderer then. Exactly. That's not my place. That's not my, you know, it's not my business. And again, this whole real core of this lifestyle, you know, whatever the business and however it all started, that's between men. What the women and the families are left for is the repercussions of your, of your family member being taken away. Yes, some of them get murdered. Um, you know, raising children by yourself, explaining to that child where their grandfather is, where their father is. You know, I was lied to for many years. And then, you know, after I was confronted where my grandfather was, that was the first step. The second step was um, early teens, maybe early 20s, getting hit with that Donnie Brasco book. You know, I was, I was a child bawling, even though I was basically a grown woman almost. You know, so there's, there's many different ripples of facts of this lifestyle. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. How many people on the show? I mean, what, what else is left to happen? Like, who is going to jail? Because there's people on the show, I mean, this season currently that are like, in t trial, right? I mean, that are being sentenced, that are having to go in for, you know, court dates. I mean, people on the show are going to prison in that big bust, right? Well, it's, well, <laughs> um, unfortunately, like, um, this Sunday is going to be the beginning of an amazing episode that a lot of people have been wanting to see really what had taken place. You know, it was in the news, um, television. So this Sunday you're going to see something that television has never really done before. And it's truth. And it's, it's hard. It's, it's hard. It's hard to see, you know, it's very upsetting. And you know what? People just have to just bear with us and say, you know what? These women, if they choose to be in it, if they were born into it, you know, they are human beings and their heart hurts and aches like anybody else. Yeah, so it's it's yeah. So even though, though the women didn't really do anything, and you you know some people think ah oh, they're guilt it's guilty by association. They're you know it's blood money. It's like these are still women with hearts that are having to see their families torn apart, and they're you know the people they love go away. 
And it's hard because a lot of people, too, and I don't care what anybody says, your husband could sit there and be the mailman. A lot of people do not know what their husbands, what their uncles, what their cousins do when they leave their home. Mm -hmm. So all you really, how I feel in my life, is you have to concentrate on the person and how you love them. And if I'm not seeing anything that anybody does, how can I be accountable of saying, well, I'm taking their blood money and I'm doing this and I'm doing that? Mm -hmm. You know, it falls into a whole other pit. It falls into a lifestyle that just, you know, just keeps on going, you know, circulating. And sometimes you do get caught up. And Sometimes there are people that didn't even know that, you know, really what their husband did. I mean, there's a lot of different circumstances in this. That's so true. for people to always sit back and judge us, you really can't because you're not in our shoes. I agree. Ramona, yeah. I would like to be, uh, maybe not in your shoes, but I'd like to be in uh, something. But I have a feeling I don't have a good enough... <laughs> Good enough lifestyle this to accommodate, is but not X-rated radio. <laughs> you're you're a beautiful woman, Ramona. Hey, thank you so thank much. You very much. Thanks for taking the time for us this morning. We can't wait for uh, Sunday's episode of Mob Wives on VH1. It's been good talking to you, Ramona, and uh, best of luck and hope everything in the future goes well for thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. The Big J Show weekday mornings from six till ten on Billings' number one hit music station, Hot 101.9.